guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. Today we're planting up the biggest flower project I have ever done at my own home. Uh, and it's definitely the biggest project we have planned for the year. So yesterday we installed 40 hay rack planters on our front fence line, 40 of them. I know it's kind of an overreaction, like a huge overreaction. It's gonna be intense, but I'm hoping that it's inspiring to you guys. I'm so excited for it. We're gonna pack them full of col colorful annuals today. So yesterday in another video, we explained how we got them all installed. So I'll link that video down below so you can watch it if you want to learn a little bit more about the infrastructure of how we got these planters installed. We also ran the initial water yesterday. So we have it hooked up to a faucet and that's also in the video. We have the tubing run on the back side of these baskets. So after I get done planting them today, we're going to be running individual emitters and we'll show you that. Let me show you the plants we're going to be using. I'm so excited. I think it's such a pretty mix of color and they're all really bright. Look at this. Look at how pretty these are. So we have Superbina Large Lilac Blue right here. Love this one. And this will give us a little bit of height because I did decide not to put a centerpiece in these baskets because I just want it to be a very uniform kind of all one look. I don't know how to explain that. Anyway, so no centerpiece, but this will give us some height. I've got Supertunia Bordeaux uh, right here, which is the annual plant of the year. I'm very excited because this is one of my favorite colors. We have lemon coral sedum. So this is something that you might be like thinking you're putting a sedum in with a bunch of other plants that need a lot of water. This is kind of a unicorn, the sedum right here. This one can handle quite a bit of irrigation and still thrive and be wonderful. In fact, when it's irrigated along with these other ones, it will compete in vigor and it will keep it from blooming. When it gets stressed, it'll bloom and it's not as nice as just having it for its foliage. So I'm very excited to use this as our pop of green and our, our kind of bright pop in this container rather than a potato vine. The sweet potato vines are wonderful plants like the Sweet Caroline Light Green. I love that plant and I thought about using it in these containers, but if I'm fertilizing them every week and giving them as consistent of water as these will be getting, it will perform like crazy to the point where I would be out here probably needing to uh, trim it on a, at least a weekly basis. I thought, you know, this is a pretty huge project. I kind of want to do something a little bit on the lower maintenance side for plants. So I thought that this would be a fun alternative. Then we have Supertunia Royal Magenta, which I think that one really packs the punch for this arrangement. I think that color right there is so intense and so clear. I just think it's a really great, it's like the weight of the arrangement to me out of all of these plants. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to kind of pull all these plants out and line them up in the containers. I think I'm going to be using three of each one of the colorful plants and then four of the lemon coral sedums in each basket, but I'm not sure until I get them all lined out. So I'm going to do that first and then I'll show you what we'll end up doing. So I already know I'm going to have to pare down the amount of plants I'm using because these baskets will not take this many plants. I want to give them a little room to grow because all of these plants are very vigorous. Uh, so let me start with three lemon corals then. And then let me grab some magenta. Before I pull the Royal Magenta Supertunia out, I just want you to see how beautiful this whole flat is. There are 10 plants in this flat, but sometimes when you pull them out, they might be a little bit leggy just because maybe at the garden center they weren't getting quite enough light or they didn't get um, a haircut when they needed it. So even though this plant is super healthy, it's a good idea to give them just a light haircut when you plant them. It will cut off some of their blooms, but it will make the plant like kind of stool out and bush out. And in like a week to 10 days, you'll have a really full plant and it'll be starting to bloom again. So it's a really good idea to do that. The beauty of Supertunias though, is that they don't have to be deadheaded. That's why I chose this variety for these planters. Same goes for the Superbina. You can give them a light haircut and it'll help bush them up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and plant all the hair racks today though with the plants looking the way they do, just so we can get an idea of the color we've got going on. Then I'm gonna go through and give them all a nice little light shearing. I think that's gonna be perfect. So I've got three lemon corals in here, two Supertunia Bordeaux, two Supertunia Magenta, and three Superbina Large Lilac Blue. I think that's how we're gonna do this thing. So I'm gonna lay the rest of them out and then I'm gonna plant them. Okay, so we got all of the plants in the baskets. It looks fantastic. I'm so excited about it. It didn't take near as many plants as I thought it was going to. So I actually have a few left over, which is really great because I haven't obviously planted our big estate planters up here yet. So I'm gonna use some of the extras for these pots so that it all kind of matches and it's married very well together. Um, 
So I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go along and plant all of these. I'll be adding a slow release fertilizer to the soil as I plant them. And then Aaron's gonna follow behind me and he's gonna be adding extra emitters to each uh, basket. I think we're gonna probably put three or four emitters in each one of them, but we'll show you that in just a little bit. You guys, they are all planted and I am so thrilled. I can't believe that these are on my fence right now. It looks so good. I mean, just from the gate, it looks good. We were looking at the area though when I got them all finished and we decided that because this is just dirt and, and weeds a little bit, we decided to um, ask our neighbor because this is actually our neighbor's land. This is our property line right here. We asked if it would be all right if we had somebody come and pour a little bit of gravel in here just to clean it up and make it look really sharp and nice. And they are totally fine. They've been so wonderful to work with. In fact, I was gonna explain to you that the baskets actually don't go all the way to the end of our property line. They go to that first big pole. And our neighbors are also letting us plant down there just to kind of try to mask. There's two poles on the end there. We just kind of want to hide those a little bit. So we're gonna start planting a few just small trees and shrubs just to, I don't know, make it look softer and prettier down there. So they've been really great to work with, but I just, I can't even believe it right now. And the wonderful thing about these, since we have them on drip and Aaron's been working on putting on all the emitters. See, we've got uh, four emitters coming into each basket. There's a two gallon per hour uh, emitter there. And so with four of them in each basket, that should be really adequate coverage. And we shouldn't have to run them for that long because it's an emitter that uh, releases so much water all at once. Um, hope, we're hoping that one zone is gonna be uh, enough for this whole run. We might have to split it into two if the pressure isn't good enough. So we'll just have to keep our eye on it. But all of the plants I used in this arrangement don't need to be deadheaded. They don't have, require any maintenance other than weekly fertilizer and then maybe a light haircut midsummer. So I did mention to you guys that I might need to trim these up a little bit because a few of them were leggy. And that might happen to you guys too. You might bring home some, uh, some plants that look very healthy but they might have some straggling arms. It's totally great and it's a good thing to do to just trim them up a little bit right when you plant them. So you can see this super bina here. It's a little bit leggy. It's got really healthy growth down here. So I'm just gonna come in and just give it a light haircut. I mean, you can use your kitchen scissors for this. It's just a really quick, easy thing to do to help the plant kind of, uh, it boosts it. It gives it more energy to put on fuller growth and more blooms. I mean, it is sad. It's sad to cut these off. I mean, you can make yourself a pretty bouquet inside, but it's better for the plant in the long run just to tighten it up. Uh, the aesthetically, it'll be so much better for it. And so for the final thing up here, of course, it's the gravel and then planting these containers. I cannot wait for you guys to see kind of this whole area all buttoned up and just ready for the season. So anyway, I'm really excited to show you guys updates. Thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.